Hello, my today's lesson is about approach to hypoglycemia in infants and the children. The content of the, this presentation include introduction, definition, causes of hypoglycemia during neonatal and the childhood period, investigations, and management. Hypoglycemia is one of the major metabolic emergencies at any age of life. And the incidence of hypoglycemia ranges from 1 to 3 in 1,000 live births. Hypoglycemia has potentially devastating consequences on brain development and cognitive function. And it is a heterogeneous disorder with many different possible etiologies, including hyperinsulinism, glycogen storage disease, fatty acid oxidation, defects, hormonal disease or hormonal deficiencies, other inborn errors of metabolism, drug poisoning, and others. The major long-term sequel of recurrent hypoglycemia include physical and learning disabilities, recurrent seizure activity, cerebral palsy, autonomic dysregulation, and the neurodevelopmental delay, and the others. Given the severe consequences, the prompt diagnosis and the appropriate management of hypoglycemic disorder in children is very crucial. Regarding definition of hypoglycemia, there is no definitive definition, but most agreed definition is in neonates, when plasma glucose concentration is less than 40 mg per dl, and in infants or children, when plasma glucose concentration is less than 50 mg per dl. But what we should have to know is, wall blood glucose values 10 to 50% less than plasma glucose level. Some also defines neonatal hypoglycemia as a plasma glucose level of less than 30 mg per dl in the first 24 hours of life and less than 45 mg per dl thereafter. When a person is affected by hypoglycemia, there are counter-regulatory hormones. Counter-regulatory hormones try to correct hypoglycemia and they are classified into two, rapid-acting hormones and delayed-acting hormones or late-acting hormones. Rapid-acting hormones include those that are critical for counter-regulation of the early phase of the hypoglycemia. Those are glu glucagon and the adrenaline, whereas slow-acting hormones include growth hormone and the cortisol. And slow acting hormones release will start 30 minutes post hypoglycemia, and their counter regulatory role is not appreciated until after 3 hours from the onset of hypoglycemia. Regarding signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, in neonates, the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia is not specific, so it looks like sepsis like uh, manifestation, such as lethargy, hypotonia, irritability, feeding difficulties tachypnea, hypothermia, seizure, and the coma. In older children, there are two types of symptoms, those that are caused by neurogenic or adrenergic symptoms, and those that are caused by neuroglycopenic symptoms. The first stage of symptom is due to neurogenic or adrenergic symptoms, and it include sweating, anxiety, tremor, and tachycardia, and also weakness. Whereas, uh, those that became prominent when first stage is not corrected, include the neuroglycopenic symptoms such as headache, confusion, irritability, fatigue, abnormal behavior, seizure, and the coma. When we see transient neonatal hypoglycemia, this transient neonatal hypoglycemia is so common and the incidence is around 2 to 3 per 1,000 live births. And it occurs within the first 12 hours after birth and it is transient and it resolves within 3 to 5 days. High risk groups include premature, small for gestational age, twins, having respiratory distress, sepsis and birth asphyxia, and also being large birth weight, infant of diabetic mother, polycythemic, vitroblastos fetalis, and hyperinsulinemia from isolated cell hyperplasia. The other is about persistent infantile or childhood hypoglycemia, and the incidence of this one is around 5% of infants with hypoglycemia, and it is persistent and recurrent hypoglycemia that does not resolve within 5 to 7 days. Causes include around 1-5-50% of them is due to hormonal deficiencies, including panhypopituitarism, adrenocorticotropic hormone or cortisol deficiency, primary adrenal insufficiency, and secondary adrenocorticotropic hormone deficiencies. The other cause for persistent infantile hypoglycemia include hormonal excess or hyperinsulinism, which might be due to beta cell hyperplasia, beta cell adenoma, or syndromes like beckwith widman syndromes. And the other cause of persistent hypoglycemia include substrate limited, such as ketotic hypoglycemia, 
inborn rate of metabolism carbohydrate amino acids organic acids and fatty acids uh, metabolic problems and miscellaneous causes such as drugs sepsis and the liver failure uh, regarding clinical assessments of hypoglycemia a careful medical history and examination is very important we should have to check for the history of prematurity iugr being st history of infant of diabetic mother birth asphyxia having polycythemia or sepsis which predisposes any unit for having hypoglycemia large baby might be hypoglycemic due to hyperinsulinism hypoglycemia that is triggered by a certain component of diet may be indicative of inborn errors of metabolism such as galactosemia cholestase and macropenia occur in setting of pan hypopituitarism hepatomegaly may tell us the presence of glycogen storage disease myopathy can also occur in the case of fatty, fatty oxidation defects and glycogen storage disease regarding investigation laboratory investigation for diagnosing the cause of hypoglycemia should be done during hypoglycemic episodes those includes from blood insulin and the c peptide assay c peptide is increased if the cause of hyperinsulinism is uh, from internal or from the patient by itself whereas c peptide is low or normal if it is from external cortisol growth hormone ketone lactate and the pyruvate ammonia and the others should be drawn and from urine specimen we should have to send for organic acid ketone and the reducing substances the other is glucagon stimulation test this test is performed when the glucose is less than 50 mg per dl in this case 1 mg of glucagon is administered iv or subcutaneous and then plasma glucose is monitored every 10 minutes for a maximum of 40 minutes if the plasma glucose increases by less than 20 mg per dl during the first 20 minutes following the glucagon administration the test should be terminated and the child should be fed and if the plasma glucose increases by more than 30 mg per dl within 40 minutes after glucagon administration this is considered an inappropriate glycemic response and it is consistent with an insulin mediated hypoglycemic disorder and if the plasma glucose increases by less than 30 mg per dl within 40 minutes after glucagon administration an insulin mediated hypoglycemic disorder is unlikely from those that cause persistent hypoglycemia persistent hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia of infancy is one of them which is called phhi and when we see the genetics of phhi it is the most common cause of persistent hypoglycemia in neonates and infants and it is also referred to as a congenital hyperinsulinism or familial hyperinsulinemia, hyperinsulinemia hypoglycemia or primary isolate cell hypertrophy and the mutations in the abcc8 and kcng11 gene are the most common and they account for 40 to 45 percent of all cases the genetic theology for the remaining 45 to 55 percent of patients is still unknown this disease is more common in uh, consanguineous marriage and the incidence in the general population ranges from 1 in 40 to 1 in 50,000 and the onset of symptoms is from birth to 18 months of age and those infants are macrosomic at birth reflecting the anabolic effect of insulin in utero increasing appetite demands for feeding wilting spells jitterness and the frank seizures are the most common presenting features in those scenarios we should, we should have to suspect hyperinsulinism those include rapid development of fasting hypoglycemia within four hours of fasting need high rates of glucose infusion to prevent hypoglycemia that means more than 10 mg per kg per minute absence of ketonemia or acidosis during hypoglycemia elevated c-peptide or insulin levels at the time of hypoglycemia the insulin to glucose ratio if it is more than 0.4 we should have to also suspect hyperinsulinism and low levels of beta hydroxybutyrate and ffa shows uh, hyperinsulinism also uh, regarding management of hypoglycemia intravenous bolus of dextrose is given over 5 to 15 minutes 2 to 5 ml per kg of tempest dextrose followed by a continuous administration of dextrose with glucose infusion rate normally of 5 to 8 mg per kg per minute if glucose infusion rate exceeds 10 mg per kg per minute it suggests hyperinsulinism and the maximum dextrose concentration through peripheral IV catheter or low-lying umbilical venous catheter is 12.5%. 
Maximum dextrose through central venous catheter is around 25%. Uh, this is a simplified formula for glucose infusion rate calculation. Glucose infusion rate is calculated as percent of dextrose in the fluid times amount of the fluid in ml per kg per day divided by 144. Just for example, if a one day neonate is receiving 60 ml per kg of 10% dextrose per day, the glucose infusion rate includes percent dextrose, which is 10%, times 60 which is 60 ml per kg per day divided by 144 this is 4.2 mg per kg per minute other medical managements include glucagon infusion diazoxide and somatostatin analog and indications for surgical management in the case of hyperinsulinism include focal adenoma oxygen and pancreatectomy or nil total pancreatectomy diazoxide acts by inhibiting insulin secretion and the starting dose is 10 mg per kg and it might be increased to 20 mg per kg per day on 3 divided doses. And the adverse reaction to diazoxide include hypertrichosis, hyperuricemia, salt and water retention and hyperglycemia and ketoacidosis during illness. Octerotide is a long acting somatostatin and it inhibits insulin secretion at the level of calcium channel. And the dose of Octerotide is 5 to 25 microgram per kg per day divided into 2 to 3 doses. And adverse effects include nausea, steatoria, delayed growth, and the gallstone formation. And the last option is subtotal pancreatectomy for hyperinsulinism. This is a summary of approaching to a child with hypoglycemia. Thank you for listening.